Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. Do you notice something a little different about me? I grew a mustache overnight. One of our artists that we meet in our story is named Salvador Dali, and he was known for his wild mustaches, and he would twist his mustaches. I wonder if he's going to twist the whiskers on little Pepette when he meets her. All righty, let's sing Hello, Nice to See You, Everyone, and get started on our day. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. All righty, so this week we are talking all about the book Painting Pipette. And here is Pipette. And we know from yesterday that Pipette is a little rabbit. It's a girl rabbit that belongs to Josette. And all the family have names that end with et. We found that out yesterday. And we're going to read the story up through Picasso and then read um, the part about Dolly. So anyone that might have missed yesterday can hear the story today. Now we know we need to remember that Pipette's face is a round circle. It kind of has a forward um, little point to it, but it has an egg-shaped body. I didn't mention Pepette's little tail. And Pepette even came with a little dress, and she can put that dress on, and there's even a place for her tail to come through in the back, which is kind of fun. I got it at that children's bookstore that we have in town, and they have a bunch of these. So if you think that you are um, needing to take a look at one up close, that's where I got it. So let's take a look at our book, and then we're going to meet our artist, look at his painting, and then do a painting ourselves. He's not a cubist, he's a surrealist. And surrealism is like they're inside their own dreamland when they paint. I might have to take the mustache off because every time I talk, it's kind of pulling on my skin. But if you want to wear a mustache, let me show you what I did. I just got a piece of black paper and I folded it and you can see, oh, I can hold it up to, oh, put white behind it, I know. I'll put this white behind and you can see, it just looks kind of like a smile I cut out of it. But watch, I fold it in half and when I have my finger on the fold, I go away from the fold and I take a little, um, snip out and I just turned it up on the ends and made it a long mustache or I could even make a different mustache that goes down if I wanted to. Even this one I'm wearing right now could go down. You open it up, put a little piece of tape on there and stick it to your upper lip. I could make a little goatee down here, but I think that's enough taping myself. All right, boys and girls, let's take a look at our book for today. And it's written by Linda Raven Lotting, illustrated by Claire Fletcher. And we know that inside this book, there are pictures of all the characters in the story. Here's the artist we met yesterday, Mr. Picasso. Here is our artist today, Mr. Dolly. And here, of course, this is Josette, and there's Pipette. Let's turn our page to page one. Josette Babette and her little rabbit Pepet lived at number nine, Rue Lafayette, Paris. Josette adored Pepet and took her everywhere. But their favorite thing to do was to cuddle on the window seat in the Babette's great room. This great room was filled with fine art. There was a portrait of Josette's mother. There were paintings of grand-mère, which means grandmother, and grand-père, which means grandfather. There were the paintings of the petite Babettes, Janet, Juliette, and Josette. There was even a portrait of their schnoodle, Frisette. And schnoodle, I think, is a cross between a schnauzer and a poodle. One day, Josette noticed something strange. There was no portrait of Pepette. We must find an artist to paint your portrait, said Josette, 
and it has to be special, just like you. So the two friends set off for Montmartre, where the best artists in pa Paris painted. Easels filled the square amid the hustle and bustle of people rushing here, there, and everywhere. As soon as they turned the corner, a man in a sailor-striped shirt stopped them. Those ears, he cried, never have I seen such majestic ears. I must paint this rabbit's portrait. Josette noticed that Pepette was blushing. Her ears had never been called majestic before. Magnifique, said Josette, we are looking for an artist. When an artist puts lines around, it just means, oh, I am shining. And that's what Pepette was doing, so excited that someone thought her ears were magnificent. That's a compliment. So the painter, Pablo Picasso, opened his easel and filled his canvas with not one, but two button noses and three rabbit ears. And when he finished, he waved his paintbrush in the air and declared his painting a masterpiece. What do you think, he asked. It's nice, said Josette. It's just that mm, Pepette has only one nose and two ears. And Pepette had to agree. And remember, we looked at this painting yesterday with those three ears on it and the two pink noses and the one eye up high and one eye down low. And now for today's artist. Just then, a man with a mustache as wide as bicycle handlebars strolled by. What a divine creature, he said, twirling the ends of Pepette's whiskers. Please, I must paint the very essence of her rabbitness. He must paint the essence of her rabbitness. What does that mean? He wants to make her look like her own rabbit self, I guess. So the man painted a most unusual portrait. Oh, you like? asked the painter, motioning to his canvas. Josette stood back. It's um, imaginative, she said, trying to find just the right words. Uh, but you painted Pepette quite, well, droopy. And Pepette had to agree. Look at the painting. Pepette's head is on top of the box. It goes to the edge and plays down. It's melting like fine cream cheese. We'll put this aside and find out what happens tomorrow, but we will do a painting of a melting pipette. I had mentioned that I had a book that told a few things about Salvador Dali, and it tells about him being himself, and I wanted to tell you some of the outlandish or wild things he did. When he was a young boy, his father wanted him to be a certain way, but all he wanted to do was paint and chase after butterflies, but then his dad gave him a most unusual gift. He gave him a bat. Not a baseball bat. A bat that flies. But Salvador Dali just wanted to be himself. He put himself in a king's crown. Now, I know you can't see these pictures up close, but I'm just going to tell you about it because maybe you can check it out from your library. But he dressed up like a king. And he went to school and the kids made fun of him. But he didn't care because he just wanted to be himself. He liked being himself. Even they put grasshoppers in his hair at school. The kids chased him and teased him. But all he did was take the grasshopper out and look at it. He wasn't worried or scared. 
because he just wanted to be himself. And in class, the teacher told him he had to stop daydreaming and looking out the window, but all he wanted to do was be himself. So what he decided when his father sent him off to live with an artist, he decided he would be an artist. And when he ran out of ideas, look what he did. He stood on his head. He stood on his head to get new ideas of paintings to have. When he looked at a woman whose arms were like this, instead of painting her, he painted a scale, a balance scale. He just wanted to be himself. And there was even a giant page that says, being himself. They keep telling us, as an artist, that's the nice thing. If there are jobs that you think you want to have, but you think, oh, I can't do that, being an artist, you can be yourself. You don't have to be like anyone else. Even the other artists didn't think he was being like them. They were having art shows where they were only painting their dreams, and that's where the picture comes in that we're studying today. It's called the persistence of memory. Salvador painted these watches and made them soft and runny. I even have one as a pin on my shirt. He said, it looked like cheese melting. He married his wife and she thought he was wonderful. She didn't think he did odd things, even though he went on a trip in a car and it was filled with cauliflower and drove it through town and the people thought, why is he driving with cauliflower in his car? He gave a speech and wore a, a scuba suit. He took a wild cat called an ocelot to, to dinner in a restaurant. He put a shoe on his head and people started wearing shoes on their head after that. They thought he was such a wonderful artist. They wanted to be like him. He made a telephone out of a lobster and it worked. You can see him back here on the telephone, and it was a lobster. After he ate the lobster, he put <laughs> some wires in there and talked on the phone. Other people bought lobster telephones. This man is using a lobster phone. So you can tell that Salvador Dali had his own ideas. And now we're going to look on the blue chart and look at one of his paintings called The Persistence of Memory. So in this surrealistic picture, Salvador Dali painted melting clocks after he saw some melting cheese in his own home with his wife. He has a pocket watch over here and it's covered in ants. This clock is hanging over a branch and melting. This is supposed to be a person and the person has a watch melting on top of them. Here's a photograph of Salvador Dali and do you see how his mustache looks like mine? He does have a look that not anyone else was wearing at the time and people would see him around town and immediately know it was him. I wanted you also to see this interesting picture. There were publishers at Random House. They paid him for 12 different paintings for a new edition of the book, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, because they knew he had dreamy pictures and Alice in Wonderland has lots of unusual happenings. But here is the white rabbit. This one is, um, through the looking glass and this is the rabbit that he painted and then there's a, a crane um, insect up at the top down here there's another line drawing of a rabbit and then here's a mushroom they're all different kinds of things and how he signed his name was in an oval with sd and a crown above it because remember i showed you the picture where he would go places wearing a crown now here is the painting that he did of pepette and Pepet is melting on that box. And we're going to do something similar to that. So, oh, you can see here, I made the paint, the picture blown up, but here's Pepet looking at himself or herself melting on this picture. 
All right, so to do the art today, you're going to use your white paper if you brought brown paint or brown crayons or brown, some kind of coloring tool that is brown. I have a sponge and a pie pan that has paper towels and the um, paint in it. And I also brought some fishing line for some lifelike whiskers. So let's get ready to do our art. All righty, let me get my table up and we'll get ready to start our project. Now what I thought we could do is do a painting, I'm doing a sponge painting of Pepette, and then I'll kind of curl it and put it on top of this silver box I brought, but I'll get that out afterwards. So let me just show you, I tried to think how I would do this and do, I think I will use my colored pencil to draw the outline just so I know where I want to do my sponge painting. So get your things ready. I'll show you how I have my paint. I put it in a palette. When I get my sponges, I put them in a little pinching thing so I don't get my hands all messy. And my sponge, I just take it. And you've seen these little clips in your classroom, I'm sure. You can use a clothespin or a paper clip. Oh, there's a mustache in here. Let's get that out of there. Don't need that. All right, boys and girls, let's get ready. So you may want to use just a pencil. I'm having my rabbit look kind of sideways like the um, one in the Salvador Dali picture. And I made its egg head kind of egg-shaped. And then I'm putting his ears backwards so that as he melts on the box, he will have some place to go. I'm putting his big egg-shaped body. I'm going to put his arm out in front. You may not be able to see because this is such a light pencil. But once I start painting it, and I'm also going to leave Pepette's little cotton tail. Maybe I'll put the front of her body like that. OK, so here I go. I'm taking the sponge paint, and I'm going to sponge, sponge, sponge all inside the outline of my drawing. Because I thought it would look good, kind of furry. You don't need to make it solid unless you want to. But as you push it down, that isn't sponge painting. That is just painting with an, a different object. So if you want it to be sponge painted, you step, set down, pick up, set down, pick up. Now, I don't want it to be quite as wide, so I'm just going to use the end of it to do the outline down here so that you can see where I'm going with my paint. Now, I am in an upholstered chair. That means a chair that's made out of cloth or fabric. But I think you need to ask where you are going to do painting, because you don't want to get paint on any of your furniture. I know I don't need to warn you, but I just like to say that out loud. In case, even at school, there are some things that your teacher doesn't want to get paint on. So you just have to be careful. I put some white in here, too, and some yellow in case I wanted to do a little variety. And I just get it and then sponge it into my paper towel so that I can go and have a little variety if I would like to. Now, if I want this to really be able to drape on that box, I'm going to need to let it dry a little bit so that I can um, cut it out and have it fold down. I just am using quite a bit of um, white now to mix my paint to make its belly a little different color. Because I think it looks cute, though, and it has a variety. Just like when we did the ears, I thought if I did um, uh, pink on the inside of the ear when we did it, the drawing, when we did Picasso. Do you notice I'm taking my time and going around the edge, and then I can come back in and fill in where I haven't gotten any paint. And if I don't have it perfect, I know that if I cut him out or her out, I can cut off any parts that I might have gone a little crazy and wild with my painting. I'm just trying to do this carefully so that you can see. After the paint dries, I can add on Pepette's features. Like, I know I'll want to put a pink nose. And I think down toward her face, I will use this kind of peachy color. Because on the face of the bunny, it's white in front. So I think I will use a little white and use a little peach for the front of her face. And go back to the brown. I have an extra um, sponge in case I don't want it to. Oh, get out of there in case I don't want it to be quite 
mixed up that much. And I'll go around the ear and go around the ear with my sponge to, oh, I just made my thumb go through the paw. It's okay, I'll cut that part off. You know, we talked about this before, is it, with art, it doesn't really matter if you make a small mistake, because you can make it into something else. Like this, I can cut off the place where I just drew my finger through there. Maybe I can go around it. It'll make it not be so much like that. There, that's much better. I'm going to get a little outline on this ear and go around the outside of it. Sponge painting is fun. And this sponge used to be my car washing sponge until it just wasn't so good anymore. And I cut it up and on the inside of the sponge, it was good and clean enough to use for my art. I like to recycle things because I don't like to spend my money on something that I already have. And you might think about that too. If you have a sponge, don't use your kitchen sponge unless your family says, oh yes, you can cut that one up. Cause they maybe they have a fresh one if that's the way you do your dishes at your house. So I can just do a little more sponge paint. And I like the, the way this one gets the brown on it. It's a little more dotty. There. OK. I think I can cut it out now. Let me move this over and show you what I have and see if you think it looks pretty good. All I need to do is add the facial features and the pink nose. So now I will, you will want to wait till yours is dry, but I want you to get an idea of how I'm going to make it look melty. See, I'm trying to stay away from the paint a little bit so that it doesn't get on. These are not my scissors. I borrowed them from somebody else's space. So I will have to wash them off if any brown paint gets on them. Because when they go to use them, they say, hey, who got brown paint all over my scissors? And I say, oh, that was me. I thought I got all that paint off. So I go around its little arms, around its belly that I added white paint to, around its leg, and curve in. Let's talk about what you'll bring tomorrow while I'm cutting, because this isn't very fun for you to have to watch me just cut out my bunny. Tomorrow when we meet Chagall, we're going to be talking about his painting, The Blue Circus. So you'll want to bring white paper again, like I keep telling you each day, oh, well, bring white paper. Um, so your coloring tools. You'll need a white crayon because in Chagall's work, he often has people or objects or animals floating through space. So we'll want to make some clouds and we're going to paint over it with blue paint. So you'll need a white crayon because wherever the crayon is, the, the paint will not stick. So you'll need um, also some blue water paint, watered down if you have it. Or if you have watercolors, you can water it down right in the bucket of um, the paint. Look how well I cut that out. I just have to get these legs done. All right, up here and in and around. Like I said, I really wish I could have let mine dry a little more before I try and put it on this box. But here comes the box. And I'll put this like this. I'll put my rabbit up here and let it float down like that. It's melting. It's like a melty rabbit. Oh, poor little bunny. Poor little bun. I think it's, oh, I just only have a little bit of paint on my hands. So I think I'm going to put his pink nose on. Let me get these scraps out of here. I can use my colored pencils again. And if I do it right here on his nose, oh, that worked out well. I'll show you. I hope it shows up. Can you see its little pink nose? Yes, you can. And I think I'll put a little pink in his ears. Oh, that looks even better. I need to put his eye on, or her eye. I keep calling it a him, but we know that she said her. Oh, that works great. Now, if I want to use my fishing line to make the whiskers, here's what it looks like. 
I don't know how much you'll be able to see, but fishing line comes on a reel, and I just, you can't even see this, but the whiskers I was going to put on Pet's face. But let me put this on here, and we'll say goodbye to everyone. Well, thank you for joining me today for learning about Salvador Dali and his surrealistic paintings where everything is melting. Goodbye. See you next time, everyone. See you tomorrow, boys and girls, to learn about Chagall and the Blue Circus. Bye-bye.